This is a this is a curious ingredient, as in it is weed killer. That's right. Yeah. To be more specific, the main ingredient is Roundup, which is a weed killer. It's called glyphosate. Okay, maybe not heard of that before, but here's a little history here on the controversy surrounding Roundup. In 2015, the World Health Organization actually found that glyphosate is a probable carcinogen. And in 2017, the state of California agreed. Then just last year, a man was awarded $78 million claiming Roundup was a major cause of his cancer. So let's get back to this new report. The U.S. Public Research Group, or PERG, decided to look into this. They found 20 different adult beverages for containing glyphosate. They found low levels of weed killer in all but one of the beverages they tested. So what are those beverages? Well, brands like Sutter Home, Behringer, Barefoot, things that you get when you take to a dinner party. And then beers like Budweiser, Sam Adams, uh, Heineken, Corona. Let's be clear now, all of these levels found are below the EPA risk. So a spokesperson for the Wine Institute told USA Today that to reach a hazardous level, an adult would have to drink more than 140 glasses of wine per day, and that's with the highest glyphosate level measured in the study. Furthermore, the EPA maintains that so far it has found that glyphosate is not likely to be a carcinogen to humans, but is set to release a new human health risk assessment later this year. So how is the chemical getting into our glasses? Well, environmental experts say it could be coming from irrigation water from farmers and that brewmasters and winemakers wine use that water. It also might be in the soil where hops or grapes are grown. And the Wine Institute also says that glyphosate is permitted for use in vineyards to destroy weeds. Certainly food for thought, or I mean drink for thought, I guess.